So you see that steak? He called me what? Pop it up, Raj. He called me. Jesus, say that with me. Jesus called me what? One more time. Jesus called me what? You might wonder, what in the world does that steak on that property have to do with him calling me witness? Well, I'm glad you asked. We're going to learn this morning. Amen? Come on, let's learn. Jesus called me witness. Okay, let's read some scripture. We'll make the case a little bit, then we're going to break it apart. Let's go with it. Several scriptures, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Say it with me. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea, in Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Matthew 28, Jesus speaking to his disciples, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the earth or the world or the age. Acts 4, the disciples, Peter and John, are arrested for preaching Jesus, for standing up for Christ. And they called unto them, and the authorities commanded Peter and John not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Now whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than to God, you can be the judge of that. For we cannot, say it with me, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Now don't go to sleep on me. We're building a case here a little bit. For thou shalt be his witness. This was said to the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. He was struck down, a blinding light. He was told to go into a city and meet a man named Ananias. He did. This man, Ananias, said unto him, For thou shalt be his what? Witness unto all men of what you have seen and what you have heard. Let's keep rolling. The same man, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1 says, Say it with me, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek or anyone else. Romans, I quoted often at the close of a service, this passage or verses from here, and right after it says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It goes on to say this, for whosoever, say it with me, shall what? Call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. But then it says this, How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in Him whom, whom they have not what? Heard. And how are they going to hear without a what? Without a preacher. Keep going. Second Corinthians. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, say this part with me, hath shined in our what? Hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Boy, I'm running over you with a Bible this morning, ain't I? Whoa, look at him. For we have this... Tr uh, th this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of who? God and not of who? Us. We're getting somewhere. Hang on. Just several scriptures as I was reading this week. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I love this verse. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Say this last part with me. I love this part right here. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded, help me, that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What a great scripture. Peter says, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready when? Always. To give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope that's in you with what? Meekness and fear. A couple more scriptures and you're going to go, wow, look at all that. We did it. Then you're going to get the message. This is just warm up. This is bullpen. Wherefore, seeing we're also compassed about with so great a cloud of what? Let us lay aside every weight, the sin that does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience. The race is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the what? He endured the cross, despising the shame. And now he's set down at the right hand of the throne 
of God. And then finally, the last time, last scripture in this little section, the book of Revelation is the last book in the Bible. When you open the book of Revelation, there's letters to seven churches. The last church was a church at Laodicea. It was a church, it wasn't a, a church that really loved God anymore. They really, they loved money and they loved power and they loved a lot of other stuff. Sounds like the church today. Here's what he says. Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen. Say this next part with me. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. That's Jesus Christ speaking and talking about himself. I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold nor hot, or hot. So then, because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will what? Spew you out of my mouth. All righty, there we go. Let's go with the message now. Just trying to make the case in the Scriptures, in the New Testament, of course, the, the strongest verse of all of them is going to be the first one. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses. So he has called me witness. He has called me witness. Now, in a group this size, we're witnesses, but he has called me personally witness. Gary Clark, you're a witness of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, let's talk about that word witness. The word witness is most commonly, say this with me, a forensic word. It's a forensic word. What does that mean? It's used in testifying. It's a forensic word. Let's just break it down a little bit. First of all, it's used in testifying in a legally binding contract. Don't let me put you to sleep right now. You buy property, you go to the, the, to the closing agent, you go to the lawyer, and they're going to get a what? Okay? Or a notary. Somebody's going to sign something if it's going to be legal and binding. Yes or no? Say so the word witness is used in testifying. In a covenant or agreement, when we do a, a marriage in Charlotte County, Sarasota County, I have to sign it and then for it to be legally and binding. Okay? And, so, and then there's a place for a couple of witnesses to sign right there. Okay? So that's what the word witness is. Something else, now you know why that stake was on the screen this morning. It's used in testifying the what? The boundary of what? Every time you see a little stake now, when you ride around town, you see a little flag waving. Look at a little flag waving. I want you to be reminded Jesus called you to be one of those. He called you to mark it down, baby. He called you to stand for Him. Are you listening? It's used to, to, to mark a corner of a property. Your neighbor comes to you and he builds his fence like six feet on your yard. Here's what you do. You take him to that stake and say, hey, sir, I'm trying to be nice, but you built your fence on my land, okay? You need to move the fence, okay, unless we can come to some agreement here or whatever. But, but about, well, no, no, I can put it wherever I want. No, you can't. Jack, there's the stake. Don't you see the stake? Y'all cool or not? This happened in the Bible. Now, therefore, come, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a what? Between me and you. And Jacob took in the Old Testament, and in, 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 in uh, Middle Eastern culture even today, uh, they still do it. He took a stone, and he set it as a pillar for property, to mark it. And Jacob said unto his brethren, gather stones. And they gathered stones, and they made a heap. And they were so excited, they ate, they ate a meal on top of the heap. How many feel that happy sometimes when you had your first house or some land, you bought some land, you just go out there and want to have a picnic or something, amen? That's what they did on that heap of stones, okay? And they did eat upon the heap. This heap will be a what? Anybody sees that heap of stones? This pillar shall be a witness, and I'll not pass over this heap to thee, and thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar uh, from here on out, and you stay on that side, and you ain't going to get hurt. Amen? Say, that was the plan. So it's used for property. Y'all cool so far? You might say, what's he doing up here? He's, what am I doing? Am I going to legal school on Sunday morning at church? Hang in here. We're going to get somewhere. Now, this is probably the most common thing, isn't it, for a witness. It's used in testifying in court before a who? Okay, we call a witness. Your next witness, please. Call your next what? 
joker, call your next dude, call your next whatever, call your next what? Witness. So we don't have to talk about that. We know that a witness is on that stand. Number four, this is probably what you don't know. It's used of a martyr who testifies of Jesus Christ and is killed for it. Matter of fact, Dina, hey Dina, wave at me. Dina is Greek, man. Okay? Some pastors have a little Greek lexicon. I have a Greek person. And I'm at my desk the other day and I holler out to her, what's the word witness in Greek? And she says, say it loud. Martius. Well, I'd already read by, you know, some of my books and I knew that it was martus. It's changed a little bit today. But in Greek, that's the word for witness is the word martius. Amen? So it has to do, the actual etymology of the word goes right back to somebody taking a stand for Christ and being killed for it. Jesus said, I call you what? Come on, one more time. I call you what? <sighs> Pretty big word, isn't it? Keep looking. Wherefore, seeing we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. By the way, in your Bible, that word right there, I mention it often. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. One of them is my mother. My mother was shot six times for her faith in Christ. And she's one of those witnesses. It goes on in the book of Hebrews to list all the people, some of the people that are there in that great cloud of witnesses. It tells some of them were sawn in half. Does it say that in the Bible? It says that. It says some of them were thrown to lions. We know Ignatius was burned at the stake as he was singing hymns to the Lord. Rome would take Christians and tie them to a post and light their city as Christians burned at night. That was how they had their lights. Y'all listening or not? Jesus said that during the time of the Roman Empire. He said, I call you what? Every disciple died a martyr. Every disciple of, the, of Jesus 12, Judas betrayed, of course, hung himself. But they all died a martyr except John. He was exiled to the Isle of Patmos to die on an isle like a dog. Jesus called me witness. Keep moving, Raj. The common thread, as I, as I studied this this week, the common thread that runs through the word witness is this. Say it with me. Say that with me. One more time. One more time. The common thread that runs through the word witness, this is my view, but I think it's solid as a rock, is the word truth. Are you a true witness? For Christ, I want you to think about it. You think about it. Truth. As I looked at this again, just what the word means, truth and a contract, covenant or agreement. You want to go to jail? You want to go to jail? Take a contract that's legally and binding and break it and see if your butt don't wind up in the slammer. You listening to me? Say. Yeah, but I didn't. Well, I didn't know what I was doing. Doesn't matter. Did you tell a lie? Did you tell the truth? You feeling it, yes or no? The next one. Truth in the boundary of a property line. Go home today and erect a fence six feet on your neighbor's property. Call him, tell him you've done it. See if your butt don't have a problem. You're listening this morning. Truth, man, truth. Truth. That's what I'm slammed with here today. Oh, try this one. Truth in court before a judge. Get up on the stand, lie like a dog. We call that what? So you even know what it's called. Is he going to smile and go, oh, that was okay. That was a good job. You just lied like a dog. Have a great day. I'll buy your lunch. You think Judge Peter Bell, who was here a few weeks ago, you think Judge Bell would let that fly? Oh, no. Truth of real faith in Christ before an executioner. How many false witnesses will die for their faith? Not a whole lot of them. You listening to me? Yet? Yes or no? You don't believe the truth? You hear that you're going to get killed unless you renounce the truth? Well, if you don't believe the truth, you'd be on the bus right away to renounce the truth. 
You see where I'm coming from this morning? In the word witness, all through any, def, any, any use of that word in life, it has a thread, and that thread is the thread of what? Truth. 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 Jesus called me what? Witness. Jesus called me to what? Come on, church. Jesus called me to what? So many in our world today, and in Inglewood, Florida, are turned off on the church because the church is full of a bunch of liars. We don't keep our word. Are you listening or not? Don't keep our word. But boy, we can preach it. Oh yeah, I love Jesus. But your conduct is not becoming of a Christian. And we wonder why that world's going to hell in a handbasket. Oh, if we just get some new government. How if we get some Christians that'll be a witness for Jesus Christ? Amen. Come on, guys. Do right. Stand for truth. Make good choices. You know, people will love that. Be honest with people. Oh, boy. Anyway. Truth. 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 Just some Scripture now. Jesus said to those Jews which believed on Him, If you continue in My Word, then you are My what? Disciples indeed. And watch this. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you what? Free, free, free. You want to be a witness for Christ? Know His truth. Believe His truth. Stand on His truth. If the Son therefore shall make you what? Free. You shall be what? Free indeed. Truth, truth, truth. Jesus speaking to His disciples. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in who? In me. Guys, I don't want to get sideways on the message this morning, but we... You talk about who's become politically correct, it's the church today. Always lead to heaven. Whatever you believe is fine. It's because you're a false witness. Excuse me. Why would we tell somebody, oh, the, the building's not on fire. Go on in. It's no big deal. Go on in. Come on. Come on in. That's what we as Christians who are false witnesses are telling to a lost world when we tell them there's not a hell. You hear me, yes or no? People say, you don't pre preach hell, do you, Clark? You'll believe in the blood of Christ. You'll preach that blood religion. I absolutely do. I don't want to be a false witness. I'd rather you not like me than him. Amen? Come on. Come on. Yeah, praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stand for, stand for the truth, man. Come on. Here's the beautiful thing. Listen, Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe in me. You and me, Jesus says, we can handle this truth thing. You put it on me, and I guarantee it, you're going to be okay. All right? You put it on me. Quit playing the games. Quit crying the scam. Quit trying to have it both ways. Come all in with me, Jesus says. Don't be troubled. You believe in God, you put that same kind of faith in me. I'm his son. Amen. Jesus said unto them, I am, say it with me, the way, the what? And the what? Life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Boy, if witness is all about truth, <laughs> you need to really anchor your faith in Jesus Christ. You listening today or I lose you? Keep looking. I just picked scriptures as I because I couldn't read the whole Bible to you this morning. And I'll pray the Father, same thought, and He shall give you another comforter, that there's the Holy Spirit, that He may abide with you how long? That's very interesting. Even the Spirit of who? Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees Him not, neither knows Him, but you know Him. For He dwells in you, and He will be with you and shall be in you. And another thing, I'm not trying to be too ugly, but I'm being a little ugly this morning. Uh, but so much is, is, is not true when we talk about the Holy Spirit in churches today. Stuff's being made up, guys. Stuff's being made up. You're listening. It doesn't line up with the Bible. People picking and choosing, pulling out a Scripture. Here's my test. If you've got the power of healing, go down to Inglewood Hospital today and heal them all. That would be really nice. Amen? And then drive by hospice. I'm sure they'd love to see you. Because everywhere Jesus went, He healed, and He completely healed. Okay? We've got something going on today that... And a lot of the world's turned off. Are you listening? Yes or no? A lot of the world's turned off. 
Or if you give money, God will multiply it. He'll make you rich. And what? Are, how about we anchor it on truth and not little fancy things? You hearing me today? Okay, that's what we're, we're talking about if you want to be a witness, a true witness. Jesus continued speaking about the Holy Spirit. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But when the Comforter, which is the who? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you what? All things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be what? Neither let it be afraid. Jesus is truth. He's called us to be witnesses. And if we anchor it on Him and believe in Him and stay solid with Him, quit making things up. Amen? Come on. Listen, that's the way to be a faithful witness and a true witness. Bank it on the book. Make it solid, what the Bible says. Are y'all hearing me today? Say. All right, good. You're doing good then. So Jesus called me what? Witness. Now, I'm almost done. It's hard to believe. I don't know what you're going to do with your day. Here we go. Yeah, go witness. Amen. Keep the truth. Say that with me. Can we say it a little louder? We're a little weak on it. Come on. Keep the truth. Keep the truth. These are just my words here at the end. Keep the truth. Keep the truth. Jesus has called you witness. Paul spoke and in the, in the New Testament, he was, he was amazed, and he said, Why have you, what's moved you so far from the truth? What's moved you so far from the truth? Be a person of truth. Believe the truth of God's Word. Instead of making the Bible line up with your life, how about make your life line up with the Bible? Amen say. Guys, something's got to quit moving. It's called a property stake. That's why we put a stake down there, a boundary. Property lines don't keep moving. Well, your life shouldn't keep moving all over the place. Why are you so messed up? Why can't you make good decisions? Why is life always coming at you? It's just crazy, man. Crazy, crazy. Maybe it's because you're not anchored in the truth. You're listening to me say. And keeping truth. Yes or no? Amen? I know this is a little hard. Oh, he came out on Sunday. He's being hard. I'm not being hard. I want you to, get, I want you to, get, I want you to have a good life. I want you to be a faithful witness, not a false witness. Keep the truth. Number two. Say that with me loud. Come on. I bet you if you did a poll of people who aren't Christians and people who are Christians and you did a percentage of who lies, I bet you Christian people lie just as much as people that ain't Christians. Why, aren't you, why don't you decide, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm working with a seven-year-old right now. Her name is Abby. Adopted her back in February. Okay? She's like a lot of kids. She thinks lying is going to make it better. She's got the wrong dad. <laughs> Isn't that what we think, though? We will lie because we think we can get by. Say that with me. We will lie because we think we can get by. Is that what we think? No, I'm going to lie so I can get in trouble. We don't think that way. We lie so we can get by. Is that what Jesus called us to, to be liars? Yes or no? Now, we once were liars. That's what the Bible says. We were liars. We were fornicators. We were this. We were that. You fill in the blank. The Bible says we were that, okay? But God, but God, but God, He's come in and He has changed us. Amen? And He's given us His Word. He's given us His Spirit. And we can tell the truth now. Did you hear me yes or no today? Nothing will ruin your witness faster for Jesus Christ than being a liar. How many likes a liar? You just like liars. I like liars. How many don't like liars? Can I see your hand? So if you're a liar, I'm going to tell you right now, we've got a lot of people who don't like you. Anybody in the room ever smacked somebody right in the face for lying to you? Anybody ever done that in the room? There's a couple. Yeah, I'm telling you, you go get hit. You better quit. <laughs> Come on. Tell the truth. Say that with me. Come on. Amen. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that what we want? Just tell me the truth. You ever said that to somebody? 
just tell me the truth. Just tell me the truth, man. Isn't that what we want? That's what Jesus is asking. I've called you witness. Pretty cool, I think. Live the truth. Say that with me. Live the truth. Live the truth. Live the truth. It's the way we're supposed to live. Live the truth. What does that mean? I mean, why can't we? It's, you know, you, you make effort to live a lie. You make effort to live a, a life that's not the truth, right? Say. Both take effort. Why not choose to live a life of truth? You might say, Clark, I've lived a life of lying my whole life. I've lived a life that hasn't been a life of truth. Today's Sunday, the first day of the week. We can start today. Amen. How, we, how about we start today? How about we start today? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to do what? To forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Guys, we can make a commitment to Christ today that I want to live the truth. I want to be a person of truth. I want to be true to the Bible. I want to be true to people in my life. I want to be true to my word. I want to be a person who lives what? Truth. Years ago, I had a man, good man, I liked him a lot, came to my office. He said, after about seven years of doing this building, he said, you can't, we just can't do this building debt-free anymore. True story. And he said to me, he said, people will not give anymore. Oh, this was a few years ago. We need to borrow the money. He says, sometimes we just are fools and we make foolish statements. That's what he called me. Basically, in my office, sitting in front of me, called me a fool. That's okay. That's okay. It's a good man. I like him. I, I thought he was a good man. I still do. And he said, I understand what you mean. I mean, you keep, he said, I'm a man of my word. He said that to me. I'm a man of my word, but sometimes we just make foolish statements. But I understand I'm a man of my word. He actually told me, he said, I've got a group of people that's on their knees now praying about our meeting. And I told him, I said, you can call them and have them get up, get up off their knees. You understand? Because we say what we mean and we're going to do what we said we're going to do if it kills us. Amen? Therefore, that's what we said. How many remember us saying, debt free or what? Yeah. Say it again, debt free or what? Yeah. Debt free or what? Yeah. It meant we're doing this building debt free if it kills us. Me, if it killed me. Why? Because our word matters. Are y'all listening or not? That's just a little old tiny story. And it was stressful. It was stressful to build a building debt-free. It was stressful. And you think, it's like, I don't like asking money for a sound system. But you're not buying me a sound. We're buying something so the gospel can be preached, so that we can be a faithful witness, and we can tell people about Christ. Amen? So I make no apologies about that. Come on, praise God. Come on. Come on, man. Yeah. The point is, is though, but it has been stressful. And so, so often in life, and don't, don't, don't think I've always lived the truth. I ain't, so don't, don't think that. And I put myself above. I'm just giving an example of how sometimes push comes to shove, and you've got to live the truth. Yes or no? Say. Live the truth. Last one this morning. Die the truth. They're cutting off Christians' heads and other parts of the world. Muslims, ISIS, whatever. If it's not ISIS, they'll come by another name, whatever it is. There's a good chance your head's not going to get cut off before you die. Because you live in America. Can we thank the Lord for the country we live in? Come on. Yeah. But what's going to happen? They're going to lay you in a coffin. Or if you're cremated, don't think you're getting by. They're going to put a picture of you out. <laughs> and when my kids see my body or my picture, I want them to say, my daddy died the truth. My daddy died the truth. Do you want that for your life? Do you want that for your legacy? I'm not talking about being perfect. But can you be a person who dies?
has the truth. I believe in Christ. I want to honor Him. I want to live for Him. And when I screw up, I want to tell Him I screwed up. He didn't do it. I did it. Living and dying the truth. Jesus called me what? Pretty good word, huh? Don't you think that's a pretty good word? Come on, it's more than just giving out a track. Oh, I'm witnessing. No, 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 no. It's a lot more than that today. Did we figure that out today? Yes or no? Amen. Let's thank the Lord for His Word this morning. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. It was a good word this morning. I got a lot out of it. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda West, Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.